Are you ready to revolutionize the way you feed your pigs and save a fortune in the process? I'm Rob from Dowdle Family Farms, and last year we saved over $1,000 just by growing diverse cover crops for our pigs to eat. Imagine cutting your feed costs for your pigs in half while boosting the health of your soil and your pigs. Does it sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. And in this video, I'm here to show you how you can do it as well. While we've grazed pigs on our cover crops and pasture for over four years, we're just now beginning to select the best, most nutritious crops for our pigs to eat, and we're testing even more of them. However, the benefits have been astounding. When I first tried to figure out the best cover crops to grow, I wasn't sure what would work. I knew that Walter Jeffries at Sugar Mountain Farm in Vermont raises his pigs on good pasture and whey from cheese producers but I wasn't sure what good pasture really is. He was growing brassicas and clovers, but my climate here in Mississippi is wildly different from his in Vermont. What can I grow in Mississippi that he could grow, and what else can I grow that he can't? Furthermore, several agricultural websites reference grazing pigs on alfalfa. Alfalfa is a very good crop, but I know a good farmer in my area who tried growing some, and it did not work out well for them. All areas, growing conditions, and seeding conditions are different. In this video, I want to help you figure out what the best forage crops are that you can grow for your pigs in your climate. Before we can move forward, we first need to ask an important question. What is your greatest priority for these cover crops? Do you want to focus on improving soil health as rapidly as possible, or do you want to prioritize the cost savings in your swine feeds? Many of the cover crops in this video serve many different purposes. Some of them are better at improving the soil, while others are better feed sources, for pigs especially. And some fields, like this one here, have pretty decent soil health, and I still want to improve the soil, but feeding pigs is more of a priority, while in other parts of the farm, I want to improve soil health first and feed pigs second. Now, this video is focused on swine nutrition and the cover crops that we can grow on that. If you haven't seen our video on swine nutrition, I encourage you to go check it out. I, I'll link it in the video description below. Uh, and I'll have a link to it at the end of this video. But it's really important to understand swine nutrition. And in that video, I show you how to start looking for what the nutritional aspects of these cover crops really are. Cover crops are typically divided into warm season and cool season cover crops. For the most part, warm season cover crops go breast in temperatures above 75 degrees or so and on into the mid 90s. And cool season cover crops grow best when daytime temperatures are 50 to maybe even 80 degrees. One caveat is that shorter growing cool season cover crops can often grow in warm season cover crop mixes because of the cooler kind of microclimate that's created by the shade of those taller warm season cover crops. In my part in Mississippi, I can grow cover crops year round. It's February and you can see the fields behind me. Uh, most of our warm season cover crops are planted in April and June, but we can also even plant them in July. And our cool season cover crops are typically planted from August on into January and February. Let's take a look at some of the individual species that we might plant and we'll begin with our warm season cover crops. Now, buckwheat is by far the most productive, the most easily grown, and the most nutritious forage crop that I've ever observed in the warm season cover crops that I've grown. It's lower in protein, normally about 14, maybe 15% protein than many of the other species, but it has a higher lysine content than most. Pigs will graze the immature plants, the flowering plants, and even the grain after it's gone to seed. I like how it regrows from seed after it's been grazed, and the pigs will miss a lot of the seed. Also, cow peas are a good forage for pigs, particularly the Chinese red and red ripper cow peas. They're high in protein, and their seeds are great forage, and they also have higher amounts of lysine as well. The only downside that I've noticed to cow peas is that they, they seem to contain more cellulose or lignin or fiber, something like that, and the pigs don't prefer them over the more succulent forages like buckwheat. One plant that I hope to try this year is mung beans. Supposedly, they're very heat and drought tolerant as well. The forage is usually about 17% protein, and they have moderate levels of lysine, but when it goes to seed in 70 or 80 days, 
the beans are 25% protein and upwards of 6% lysine. I think it holds a lot of potential in my mixes this year. Now, forage soybeans are longer growing than the grain varieties. They're viney types. Typically, they put on more plant material and less grain. I've grown them two years, and the last year was the only year that they performed really well, but the pigs that I had grazing them did quite well for two months. They have 15% crude protein, and they're low in lysine, but I do like to add them to a mix because they offer some diversity and the amino acid profile, along with some other nutrients as well. Now, safflower is a good cover crop as well. I've grown it for one year, uh, two or three years ago, and it's often planted for other soil benefits. I do hope to try some in our swine forages. It's lower in protein than most, and I'm not sure what the lysine content is. Sunflowers are a great crop as a cover crop, but they aren't particularly nutritious for pigs unless they go to seed. I don't like sunflower seeds for pigs to eat because it seems to make the fat of the pigs a little bit greasier, but usually the birds eat the majority of the seeds in our mixes before the pigs can. Now we use sorghum sedan grass as the base for all of our warm season cover crop mixes. It is an absolute boon for soil health. The pigs will graze it. It's lower in protein and other nutrients, but when the pigs do get to the point where they are eating large amounts of it, they're usually beginning to lose body condition and they need supplemental feed or they need to be moved to better forages. It does regrow well from being grazed even when the pigs eat it to the ground, but it is a huge benefit for soil life. Pearl millet is grazed similar to the sorghum sedan grass uh, in terms of its grazing impact and it's usually done well for pigs. Brown top millet is usually the cheaper of the other millets that we feed. It doesn't regrow after grazing. It's basically a one and done plant, but it does offer some diversity. Of course, there are other grasses like grazing corn and some others. But let's take a look at some cool season cover crops that we can plant. They usually take longer to grow for me. We'll plant them from August, through October, and most of them are ready to begin grazing only in March or April. Some of them overwinter well in colder climates than mine, and some of them will freeze and die in real cold weather. Now, alfalfa is often the king of pig forages, but it doesn't work well for me, as I've already mentioned. Clovers are usually the next best forage mentioned, and I'm gonna treat all types of clover together, though they each have their own separate strengths. As a general rule, they're high in protein, calcium, and they have moderate amounts of lysine. Red and tall white clovers and even crimson clovers are often touted as the best forages for pigs, but I'm finding that some of the ball clovers and the balanza clovers to work pretty well too. The downside for them is that they're planted in the fall and grazed in the spring four to six months later. So, so the clovers leave a huge window of time while they're growing. Now, brassicas are higher in protein. Uh, dwarf Essex rape is one of the better ones along with collards because they can handle both cold and warm weather better than say turnips or radishes. Pigs will eat daikon radishes. They've worked well for us this year and even the turnip roots are sometimes eaten if the pigs are hungry, but they aren't fond of them. Small grains like wheat, cereal rye, oats, and barley are good. Barley doesn't seem to grow well in our area, but it, from what I understand, it is really nutritious and pigs like it. I prefer cereal rye. The protein and the lysine levels are high, especially in the vegetative stages. But none of these small grains are we actually growing for grain. This year, though, I've really fallen in love with Austrian winter peas. I think if I plant them earlier in the fall, like August, I'll get more growth come December and January as we get these cooler temperatures. It's higher in protein, real high in lysine, and our breeder pigs have preferred it over the brassicas, clovers, and everything else that we planted. Uh, this year, I planted some acres of hairy vetch behind me here, and some of the research says that the seed of hairy vetch can reduce the total feed intake of pigs, thus limit swine performance. That said, the article I read was 30 years old and it's not been followed up with. Um, similar claims are often made of buckwheat, and brassicas causing kidney damage or sunburning problems. I've never experienced those myself, but all of this is a matter of balancing risk and trying some different techniques.
There are some species that seem to do well year round, but they lean toward the cool season species. And these are mostly forbs like chicory and plantain. They've worked well for us. They're a small part of our grazing mixes, but the pigs will graze them, especially because they have micronutrients. Now I try to plant as diverse a mix of crops as I can, partially because it benefits soil health. But the, for the most part, the more species that you have, the more the pigs can selectively graze. I prefer 10 to 15 different plants in my mixes. Let me explain. There's no single plant that's ideal for swine nutrition. When we grow diverse mixes of plants, the pigs will eat some of the plants. Some of the plants will have more protein. Some will have more lysine or calcium or phosphorus. When the pigs are grazing them, they'll often select the plants that they need and they feel that they need to grow. They seem to know what they need instinctively. Of course, the diversity of plants also increases and benefits the soil life as well. That's why I include sunflowers, for example, because even though the pegs rarely eat much of them, they improve soil life and increase songbird populations. Now that we have some idea of the different species that grow reasonably well, let's turn our attention to something that people don't often consider, and that's short versus long season crops. In a diverse cover crop mix, this is less important and things will usually sort themselves out. For example, in our warm season cover crop mix, the buckwheat often goes to seed and is dying after 60 or 70 days. And at that time, the buckwheat begins growing really, really well. Succession takes over and things kind of work themselves out. However, if we're aiming at grazing cover crops year round, then we need to fill in the gaps of production. For example, we have plenty of forage available usually in March, April, and the early part of May. We also have a lot of forage available in late June, July, August, and September. But other times of the year, uh, we have less forage available, like September and October when it's dry, and then January and February are usually tough for us. We can plant shorter season crops to grow in those windows of time. Like in August and September, I can plant things like buckwheat that'll be ready to graze in November, even on into January, though the buckwheat will have died from frost. Similarly, some varieties of cowpeas like the iron and clay perform really well when they have a really long growing time, three to four months or so. Red ripper cowpeas, however, are often ready to graze in 60 to 70 days. I'll go into more detail uh, as we develop grazing plans throughout the year in later videos, but it's worth noting that shorter and longer season crops perform differently and will affect our mixes sometimes. Finally, your soil conditions will matter. Most people know this from gardening, but some crops perform better in acidic or alkaline soils, uh, and some soils are wetter during the cooler times of the year. For example, I've been working with Alsaki clover, ryegrass, and Balanza clover to overcome some of the wet soil conditions that we have on other parts of the farm. If you're willing to spend some time and energy looking into these species and maybe some other cover crops, you should be able to find some forage crops that you can grow in your area. It's a lot of trial and error. It takes a lot of research, but hopefully this video will help you save some time and a lot of money as you prepare to grow your cover crops and improve the soil health on your farm. Take care and have a great day.